Hello everyone, welcome to our flash note series. In this series, we will have bird's eye view on very high yield clinical conditions and some of the clinical correlations. This is flash note 1. In this particular flash note, we will overview the root which are traced by the spinal needle during the lumbar puncture procedure. Let's enter into our proper topic. Before starting our proper topic, we need to have certain overview regarding the course of the spinal curve in the vertebral column. So, in the adult vertebrae, spinal cord gets terminated at the lower border of second lumbar vertebrae and the subarachnoid space. See here, we have two S in the subarachnoid space. This is just for memorizing person. In the subarachnoid space extends up to the lower border of second sacral vertebrae. Spinal cord ends at the lower border of L1, L2 vertebrae. Subarachnoid space extends up to the lower border of second sacral vertebrae. So, our spinal needle must be inserted anywhere in between these vertebral spaces. Of course, this is the anterior view and this is the posterior portion. And we are seeing the lateral aspect, the lateral region, lateral section of the spinal cord with the vertebral columns is being shown. This is the anterior aspect of the body and this is the posterior aspect of the body. This is only for our proper orientation. So we have three spaces here between this one space and between this one space. So this upper space is between L3, L4 vertebrae, lower space is L4, L5 vertebrae. So we can insert our spinal needle anywhere between L3, L4 or L4, L5. First layer which we will deal is the skin which will be followed by fascia and, and subcutaneous fats. And we will have three ligament of the vertebrae. First we will have the supraspinous ligament. Supraspinous ligament, it connects the spinous processes of the vertebrae. So we will be facing the supraspinous ligament and then we will face the interspinous ligament that is between these two spinous processes. First we will meet the supraspinous ligament and then we will meet the interspinous ligament and finally we will meet this innermost layer that is ligamentum flavum. So, the three ligament of the vertebrae we will meet is the first supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament and finally ligamentum flavum. And then we will reach the epidural space. For example, this is epidural anesthetic anesthesia needle. Then while this needle is, is piercing and let's see where this needle might end. So, we are going through the skin, subcutaneous fats, and this through the supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament, ligamentum flabum, and finally, we ended our needle in this epidural space. Following epidural space, we are now reaching into the proper matter of the spinal cord, which will be followed by the arachnoid matter. Following arachnoid matter, we have subarachnoid space. So, this is the space where there is the flow of cerebrospinal fluid. This is the space where there is flow of cerebrospinal fluid. Hence, we will end up our spinal needle at this level. So, let's see how we will be ending our spinal needle. Suppose this is our spinal needle. Then, what the root which is traced by the spinal needle is something like this. It will first trace skin, fascia, fat, supraspinous ligament, intraspinous ligament, ligamentum flavum, epidural space, dura mater, arachnoid and finally subarachnoid space. And when we will reach the subarachnoid space, we will stop 
our needle right here and we will collect cerebrospinal fluid the laboratory findings in the differential diagnosis of the various conditions of the swelling of meninges that is meningitis we will deal them in our next slide stay tuned thank you